Hello everyone, so today I'll be showing you the basics of the mission editor, what each button means, what it does. I won't be showing you how to create a mission in this video, but this might come in a future video if this video gets enough support. This will be a very basic tutorial that I hope will help you build up your skill. So let's go on. Mission editor, new, let's call this tutorial video. Uh, here it doesn't really matter, this is single player or multiplayer, I just leave both sides on. You can decide which faction you want people to be able to join. I always choose with Boscali because Boscali on top. And which map should we use? Let's use Ignis. Alright, so now we are in the mission editor. So, let's get down with the basics. This menu over here, let's use spawn aircraft. So an example, the cricket, revoker. If you press place, you'll see the aircraft hovers with your mouse cursor. Boom, and there you go. You have an aircraft right here. And you can also see the aircraft on the map. You can click on it, select it, and press the delete key on your keyboard if you want to delete it. Unfortunately, undo, control Z undo does not exist in mission editor. I have no idea why, uh, but oh well. Next is the vehicles menu, which lets you spawn vehicles. For example, the Aeros sp uh, Spag, which shoots down aircraft and bombs. Or maybe an anvil. Or maybe a radar truck. You can change the faction that they're in over here. Neutral, Boscali, Primeva their AI skill and will they stay in this current position or move about if you set an objective. Next, ships. Here we have all of the types of ships, an example the Annex class carrier. Again, it's basically the same as vehicles and aircraft. You can change the AI skill, will it hold its position? Is it in Primeva, Boscali, Boscali of course, Boscali on top. You can change the name of the carrier, so very cool. Carrier 1, there you go. And as you can see, there's this little weird flag thing over the carrier. And this will appear on any airbase, as you can see. And although I'm not going to be getting into this today, this basically lets you choose this as an airbase. So you can change its name, not a carrier, which faction is the airbase in, capture defense. So if, for uh, example, Ibis lands on this, will it be able to capture it, etc, etc, right? But this isn't what I'm going to be showing today. Next, we have buildings. So let's say an example, aircraft revetment, which lets you spawn in, with, let's say helicopters, tarantulas, whatever and you can change into what base this is from again exactly same as ships and vehicles allow capture can this be captured or not we also have stuff like factories which in example produce uh, aircraft or vehicles and if these factories get destroyed then the team can't produce anymore whatever it produces the team basically starts losing here you can see what production time will it create one of these units every 30 seconds or more you can see there's a bunch of stuff here radar you get my point next we have the scenery menu which is basically a little menu which lets you place down decorative objects for example this thing you could place an anvil here ah look at that. That, that that looks pretty neat and you have all types of scenery objects here containers everything you wish for you want is right here very cool next we have the air bases menu which is again what i already discussed so here you can see the air bases i already explained that so you get the point next we have the factions menu which might look a bit complicated at first but if you read into this it becomes pretty easy so here you can change which faction will supply to boscali primeva or both of them for so example which balance will the team start with so how much money will they have at the start of the game how much players uh, get income regularly a minute how much money the player will have when they join the game so an example they could have the regular 20 million or you could give them 1 billion uh, i don't know why would you do that but yeah you could do that a little kill reward multiplier pretty self-explanatory contribution amount and from this what i understand is basically every time you earn points how much of those points go to the team here here's with how many nuclear warheads would the team start with because normally every team starts with zero and then the factories and facilities start creating some. Next, how much will each team keep airframes in reserve? How much airframes will be reserved per player? How much active AI aircraft there will be when the players get into the game? So this will show how many um, AI aircraft will be flying around. And this slider basically reduces the AI aircraft count by one. I'm pretty sure once every time a friendly player joins that same team. You can experiment around with this and see how much will this affect uh, the AI aircraft. And this is the same but for enemy, how much aircraft will be added when a player joins the enemy team so then how many aircraft will be added to the other other team and then we have the restrictions menu which basically restricts the selected team with which weapons or aircraft you don't want them to use they just won't be able to spawn them or use them they just won't be in the list for example we don't want uh, 20 kilton cruise missiles we can restrict it and then boom or we can just spam this and restrict everything same goes for the aircraft if we don't want the chicane we've restricted it good because the chicane sucks anyway on to the mission settings little menu here is what basically will describe a mission an example quick I'm making a tutorial uh, here you can select what will the game be for single player and player uh, which rank the player will start with how much points the player will gain will the player be allowed to respawn so if you die that's it 
you lose. And games like Escalation, Confrontation obviously have this on or else it'd be impossible to beat them. Successful sortie bonus, so how much you get for actually, let's say, destroying something and then landing, which you get way more extra points for. A tactical nuclear threshold basically controls the threshold for the normal nukes, like 1.5 kiloton and etc. So, and the strategic nuclear threshold is for 250 kiloton nukes, the minimum rank, and this controls the amount of wrecks that the game will have, so 10, 20. This will lag your game if you just leave it a high number, just I leave it at the normal Rex despawn time, how much it takes for them to despawn. And now we have the environment menu, which basically I think is pretty obvious, controls the time of day, so we can make it very dark, have a little nice sunrise, how um, quick the time will go by, so 1 times is very slow, 10 times is fast, conditions, cloudy, not cloudy, thunderstorm, what's the height the clouds should be at, as you can see they, I can raise it, make it higher or lower, and wind speed is, you get it, wind speed, wind direction, random, what the moon will look like, so let's look for the moon, oh there it is, okay. We can see the moon actually moves around and you can see its phases change, which is pretty neat. Very cool to see. It's a bit of a half moon, and there you go. And a fun fact, this is actually a 3D model. This isn't just an image. This is a, like a cut 3D sphere, I'm pretty sure, so it's pretty neat. Next, we have the objectives menu, which is the most complicated menu so far in the entire game. And this menu is a very good rage baiting tool. It baits you so, phew, so good. I remember my first time using this. I was bashing my head against the wall trying to figure out what did I do wrong, why, why are, I don't know, some aircraft not attacking certain aircraft. And even now, I sometimes want to scream, but hey. That's life. Anyway, this basically controls the objectives for each team. So an example, this is a mission start thing, which basically tells the game to start, which faction this is for, will it be hidden? So an example, if you have a objective, will it show or hide? My gosh, there's a lot to this, so I think I would have to cover this in an entire different tutorial and show how you how to create a simple mission of this, but that'll be for another tutorial. <laughs> this is the objective tool, outcomes, units, which units are spawned currently in the game, so you can see, oh, let me make it a bit brighter, which units are already spawned in the game, so this you get it. And next, air bases, which air bases are actually there. So, Opal Airport, which is this airport over here. Next, we have the map. Obviously, it just opens the map. That, that's it. Just in case you didn't know, you can open the map with M, which, if, if you don't know that, you can open the map with M. What are you doing here? Learn the game first. Next, roads. Which roads are there? So, let's say we can see the roads in the game. What roads? The AI, tanks, whatever will follow. And we can add roads, delete roads. Again, I, I myself have to learn this because I'm a bit unsure how this uh, works, but that's fine. But yeah, that's the roads menu. And next, we can just toggle camera clipping. So will the camera be able to clip through these or will it just be forced to not clip through anything? Pretty simple. Most hardest thing for everyone that will want to learn the mission editor is the objectives menu. And this was just a very quick short video just to show you the basics of the mission editor. I'm sorry if I explained something terribly. I'm not a tutorial guy. If this video gets, I don't know, a hundred likes, I'll make an objectives tutorial on how to create like a simple mission with aircraft and vehicles. So that'll be it for today. And thank you for watching. And I will see you people in the next one. Bon voyage!